All right, so it's uh, been requested of me to show a little deceiver pattern that I've kind of been playing with. Um, this is uh, this is it. Just a real handsome little guy. Um, so I add eyes to them. You don't have to. They usually fall off pretty quick. Um, I haven't really come up with a real great way of adding eyes, so it's up to you. But uh, the things you will need, B10S and a one-aught. Um, you can do them smaller than a one-aught, but uh, for the sake of smallmouth and trout and steelhead and everything else, I'm just going to show you this in a one-aught. Um, a medium brass cone. Um, I'm using white. Um, if you're, you're gonna, you can change the color of this thing immensely. So, um, you know, if you want to use a chartreuse one, if you want a chartreuse head, whatever, go for it. Um, UV polar chenille. UV polar chenille is awesome. I use it a lot in gold. I use it a lot in silver. Um, it comes in white, it comes in olive, it comes in copper, it comes in all sorts of stuff. Uh, ripple ice fiber in white and in sand and hairline extra select craft fur in white and sand as well and then um, another thing you might decide you do or you don't want um, but I think it really adds a lot of accent is just a half grizzly cape um, for using for like the side barring uh, it's Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Um, today's, today's tie is brought to you by Earth Rider out of Superior, Wisconsin. Not Duluth, Minnesota, Superior, Wisconsin. Just the other side of the river, way cooler. I don't know. If there wasn't a river, I probably wouldn't realize I was driving through two separate towns. Got the sample pack though. You get a free pint class with the sample pack. They didn't do much to get this sponsorship. It's like I'm not doing much. Um, so anyways, start off, grab your hook. Grab your cone. I'm also using the Vivas uh, 150 denier gel spun. Um, I like to try to keep the thread as tough as I can without getting it real thick um, because I'm going to tie this guy right up to the eye and I don't want to build a big thread dam up there by the eye. So go ahead and get your cone on. Like I said, I'm using the medium. Um, if you're fishing in a place where the current's a lot faster and a lot deeper, throw a large cone on. Get it down there a little bit more. This is where you get to decide right now. Um, so anyways, to kind of go along with the, this is a fairly bomb proof, um, thing, we'll go ahead and use zap -a, -gap. a lot of times guys will have problems with these flies twisting, uh, on these types of hooks or like smallmouth flies twisting and, um, any step I can take to try to create a better bond, I'll do, um, start about, if the cone's all the way up to the eye, you can probably see it on here. I'm starting about half a cone's length back. Um, and then just getting a good thread base until the curve of the hook starts. Sorry, I'm kind of using black thread here. It's a little tougher, but I brought my thread all the way back to here. I started it right right here, so right behind the cone. Enough room for us to be able to move the cone back and add our head at the end. Um, so anyways, first material besides the thread you're gonna add is this ripple ice fiber. This stuff is neat. Um, you know, in this sort of fly, we probably would have used a lot of bucktail in the past, um, which then has some buoyancy. So it's kind of nice to be able to have these synthetics now um, we don't have to use all of that. So I tie it on right in the middle 
of the material or or if anything, 60% of it hanging off the back. Really depends on how long your craft fur is that you're gonna match up with it here. So there, that's our, that's our base of our tail. That's gonna keep the craft fur from hopefully from wrapping around. And I'm going craft fur white. And on these bigger ones, grab about an inch by an inch square of craft fur um, and separate that before you cut it. And then cut nice and close to the base. Move your fingers out about half an inch or so. And then take your trusty old man comb and just come through those one time. Wow couple times it'll take all the extra fluff out you don't need any of that for this particular part and then hold everything move your fingers back up and get a nice flat cut to it hold that right in over your ripple ice fiber so it oh, so it all parks up on top Just like that. Get a couple of good good wraps in there. Your next step is going to be your UV polar chenille. Polar chenille. You're going to need about probably four inches. I don't know. I cut a fair amount off here, but. Try to get back up, make sure you connect up with everything else, and then bring it up to just shy. See that? See that just just shy of the hook, or just shy of the bead there. I wrap it you know, pretty tight. I don't leave gaps in between. Um, if you wanted to, you could put down like a Estaz or something and then wrap over it um, to kind of make sure that you didn't show any of the black, the hook or anything like that. But for the most part, it doesn't get seen a whole lot. All right, so then this is where our yellow Hackles come in at. Still got a few on this other one here. So I'm going to cut these guys so that they're not quite as long as all the way to the tip of the tail. So about maybe an inch short of the tip of the tail. It's about as scientific as it gets right there. Loose wrap, gather that guy up. finish that guy and then get a good bead of super glue on your brush here kind of pull all the feathers back tip the cone up and just get it right inside the cone there on the threads everything in there and then just set your brush back in there you're gonna need it here in just a second there we go push that guy back on there you see there, I got like a 
almost the width of an entire cone up in the front there. I just put another drop of super glue on there. I'll go ahead and get my thread on and go all the way back to the cone. I'll let your super glue dry a little bit. All right, next up, ripple ice fiber, or no, um, craft fur and sand, and then ripple ice fiber and sand. Actually have sand I'm working on here. Again, about a inch by inch square. You'll quickly probably wish that you had more. Um, this particular portion, I don't, I don't bother taking the under fur out on this and I lay it so it just covers up the cone and I can get just one or two nice loose wraps over it here. And then kind of tighten your wraps down, do one more and then use your, just kind of the weight, um, of your hand, for the pressure. You should be able to spread that out really well, really uh, disperse it evenly around the hook. And then get your thread back to the front side here. So now we're out on, on this side of that material. So here's where you can kind of decide if you're gonna put eyes on it and you wanna make that flat, um, flat minnow pattern then you use the ripple ice fiber. If you want to leave it a puffy head, don't put any eyes on it, then you use the ripple ice dub um, or hair. You can go kind of either way on that. Um, but we're gonna do a nice classy head. Um, eyes, eyes in the whole shebang. So anyways, first item that we'll actually do is we'll get just a couple extra wraps on there and then flip it upside down. And then pull out. It's not a ton of ripple ice fiber because you're gonna end up doubling it over, but you still want a fair amount on there so that the head looks nice and full and thick. So I'm gonna say if you clump it all down, yeah, it's about, it's about that much. It's maybe 50 strands. Um, anyways, you're going to put that on there. You're going to do it about 60-40. And you're going to set it right on there and just do one loose wrap. And just make sure you got it. And then two. And then make sure you rotate that the right way so you're not undoing your thread to flip it over. Then on the top, we're gonna to use our sand. If you kind of grab the tips of the top of the package here, usually it works itself out pretty decent. You can kind of stack them. However you need to, so that there's about that same number in there. You should be able to kind of feel similarities between the clumps. Um, and then 60-40 that guy, just a quick, quick tie down, get a couple of good wraps on there and then kind of spread that material out a little bit, top, spread it out a little on the bottom. You want that material to kind of ride on top of the uh, craft first and then separate the top. Bring your thread around halfway, get it through there. Bring it down the bottom, get it on that side. I'm sure you're on that side of it. There's your minnow. Take it again, comb it out. Make sure you don't have any weird fibers in there that are gonna make it swim funny. Everything should be nice and straight. So there it is, everything's nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead, 
I'm gonna whip finish it. I've only done like two wraps in front of the thread here between the material and the eye. So that uh, is a nice blunt head. Um, it's gonna get a lot more action when you're when you're giving it tugs. So anyways, uh, on this stuff, I mean, I think Gorilla Glue, uh, just a dot on each side with an eye, uh, 14 millimeter eye, or right, 14, quarter, or, yeah, quarter, six millimeter. Just a dot on each side, and then got these handsome misfit dragon eyes been digging mm -hmm. go ahead and set these guys right on top of their little glue bed there Touch at each side here and kind of make sure that you got them kind of seated how you want them and they're not moving back and forth on you. And then my Misfit Clear Cure stuff. <clears throat> kind of hold it back and then I just kind of I paint the forehead with it. Make sure you kind of push as much in underneath that eye as you can. Flip them over. Same on the bottom. That white is gonna be UV, as you can probably tell. It's pretty gorgeous, it's pretty, pretty fly. So there she is, the Golden Shiner Minnow. Hopefully you guys uh, get what you need out of that. Have a good one. Stay safe.